You grew up in a Jewish family. That's right. With whom did you have best uh, contact with during your childhood? Well, my dog was the closest to me in, in my household. Uh, he used to sleep under my bed and walk me to school every day, Is wait for me at the end mm -hmm. of the school, walk home with me. So I can honestly say that the member of the family that I was closest to was, was my was my Your dog. dog. What kind of dog was it? It was a Scotch Terrier. Uh-huh. Very beautiful dog. So you didn't have an overprotective Jewish mother? I had a very, I had a wonderful uh, mother. Uh, I really only met her when I was 40. You know, I never saw her as a woman until I was 40. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I, I think it takes a long time before, uh, before you see your parents as human beings. That's true. Uh, I, I always thought she was wonderful and uh, she was, uh, you know, my friends would come back to the house at two or three in the morning uh, when we were teenagers and make French fried potatoes in the kitchen and my mother would come down and she'd sing with us to three, four in the morning. Mm -hmm. And she was really a warm, uh, open, uh, not protective though in that, mm -hmm. in that smothering sense, no. Mm -hmm. She allowed us to have our uh, friends downstairs. Uh, we were allowed to bring girls in, into the house late at night, sleep over. It was very, very, very open. Uh, but my own personal life has always been very dispersed. I move around a lot. You know, for a while I used to think that I had to move around because of, for professionally. But uh, I, I think I just move around anyways, even if I didn't have to. Things get too hot someplace and I move on to the next place. So you, you don't want to live in a family close? Uh, you prefer just traveling around? Well... I don't want to let the facts get in the way of the truth. Um, I guess the truth is that I don't want to, because I, I don't seem to be able to establish a household. I, I have a deep longing to establish mm -hmm. a household, but I don't seem to be able to pull it together. I'm guided. I think the magic has moved from music and art into athletics. Yes, but if you want to seduce a woman, there is, there is, it's a very good way to just start singing or play piano music or something. Well, I, I suppose, I don't think anybody in, in, the, in this world has ever seduced a woman. <laughs> I think that... I was uh, just going to ask you, yeah. how do you do when you seduce a woman? <laughs> I, I, don't, uh, I don't think I've ever seduced anybody in my whole life. You get seduced all the I, time. I don't think it's that way. I think that there's... Uh, I think that there's a, a mutual agreement. Uh, usually it's the woman that uh, gives the permission for this agreement to be made. I think men being the kind of uh, cocker spaniel, uh, puppy dog uh, hearts that we have, uh, I mean, uh, I think men fall in love every second with everybody. So it's usually up to the woman to, uh, to decide whether that union is possible. So uh, usually the woman uh, uh, controls the event, or at least initiates the, that psychic landscape is developed by the woman in which it can take place. Mm. Now in your singing you have um, turned more to God than to the woman. Is that a sign of aging or? <laughs> well, there's a lot of signs of aging, but I don't know if that's one of them. Uh, I guess I've always confused women and God the roles of men and women are so complex. Uh, we need each other so deeply. Uh, we're so deeply incompatible also that uh, you can't uh, reduce it to a slogan. And I think people are really tired today of the, um, of the roles we're being cast in. Uh, and uh, I think it's time for a truce between men and women. Mm. We're all in the same boat. Hmm.